We've discussed building information modeling, or BIM, several times, but this time we wanted to take that discussion even a little further. Here to chat with me is Pietro Ferrari, Professor and Program Coordinator for the School of Architectural Studies at George Brown College. Pietro, welcome to the show. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. Exciting. So Pietro yeah, it's great. So let's talk a little bit. You and I have talked so many times about what's happening in the BIM space. And I think BIM is going through a lot of changes in construction. What's your take on that right now? Well, I think I think BIM is definitely um, making a lot of changes in the industry. BIM has really, uh, I, I like to say, we've entered the fourth industrial revolution, where BIM is actually going to completely transform and shift how we design, how we build, how we operate, uh, everything from buildings to infrastructure. It has really changed the nature of the business, the conception of the business, and the application of the business of architecture, engineering, and construction. It's really an exciting time. Uh, the uncertainties of the future make it more so exciting, but it is definitely uh, full steam ahead with BIM. And when you say that, how are designers really taking part in this change in, in, in BIM right now? Or is their role really increasing in a different way? Well, I know uh, up until a few years ago, when I say a few years ago, maybe 10 years ago, there was a, a certain hes hesitation with the majority of consultants to really, it's just like any other change, right? No, there's uncertainties and of course the cost factor, the money making factor was always uh, front and center. I think now as they, uh, as consultants have seen the advantages and adapted to the, the methodologies, because it is really, it's a mind shift. It's a whole operational shift from top to bottom or from bottom to top, depending on your organization. Uh, but designers I see are, are really becoming more aware of it and are really jumping now onto the bandwagon. I know from an educational standpoint, I have constant networking opportunities with industry, architectural engineering and construction here in Toronto. And up until a few years ago, as I said, there was a certain reluctance and it's like, well, we don't, we don't know how we can make money from it yet. But obviously they've seemed to have solved that problem and they've really adapted to it significantly and the larger construction companies are doing the same. The one big factor that I think will really put it over the top is once owners really begin to understand the benefits of, life's, of BIM and its life cycle merits in the facility management and how it ties into how we use the buildings and what our use of the buildings can feed in terms of data to them. That's a really good point. So talk about that, that life cycle of the projects. How is that really making a difference when you talk about that? Well, the, uh, the theoretical concept, of course, was that there would be one big conglomerated, federated BIM model. Everybody put their, their pieces into it, and at the end, poof, there was this, this miraculous database that would basically do everything on its own. It's not quite that simple. Um, the reality of it is that developing different BIMs and different models um, may or may not lead to a construct, constructive facility management component or life cycle management. Uh, so if the data is accumulated and the models are prepared properly, the advantages to an owner are, are significant enough that of course will save them money and make their buildings much more efficient. There is the possibility of improved space management with a properly built facility uh, management model. There is uh, streamlined maintenance that could be extracted or, or taken advantage of. There's energy efficiency, of course. Um, we see it in the modeling component at the design end or the consultant end, but of course, if a model for facility management is properly uh, set up and administered, there could be significant benefits in terms of energy efficiency. Retrofit fits, of course, you always know what's there all the time. Real-time changes, real-time uh, actualities are prepared and made evident. And if you're spending less time figuring out how to retrofit what's there, or better yet, what's there to retrofit, it's only going to save you time and money. And of course, the, the entire life cycle management and selection of materials, replacement materials, scheduling, 
certain aspects so you know when your building might need some um, retro or upgrades or uh, equipment might need to be adjusted ahead of time. Of course, trying to trying to maintain something ahead of time always saves you money in the end. You can just look at, at vehicles, at cars. You know, you maintain your, your vehicle when you're supposed to, you don't blow your engine. But when the warning light goes on at the, at the last minute, then you're in trouble. So it could be transferred in the same context to uh, facility management and life cycle management. The reality is that our buildings are here or hopefully are here for decades. And it actually costs more to run the building and maintain the building and keep the building alive than it actually is to put the building together in the end. So really what you're talking about is this new flow of data that we have is giving us this new insight into everything we want from the beginning of our project all the way through that life cycle to the end. And that flow of information is changing what we see, how we react, how our projects are, are constructed in ways we never knew possible. Absolutely. Uh, and, and the beauty is the data. The problem is also the data. With new technology, data is is ob ubiquitous. It's everywhere, all the time. There's models that will track real time use of of equipment, of of corridors, of lighting components. Building automation is such a huge factor that will tie in to the management uh, model as well. The data is that 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 could possibly if you don't know what to do with the data and how to stream the data and where to feed and extract information it it becomes it become management of the model is is really a, a huge component management of that data so yes data from day 1 if the team sits down at the table from day 1 and decides what data a gets inserted into the model and b gets understood what, when, and, when and how it needs to be extracted from the model. Uh, that's what makes the model efficient. There's Pedro, different types of... We're, we're out of time, but I want to thank you for joining me and in, in the, the, the sharing this information. I hope you'll come back and talk with us again. Absolutely. I'd love to. All right. Thank you. That's our innovation and technology for today. Thanks.